All right, welcome you guys. Today we're gonna to talk about cellular division. So this will span uh, two lectures. So first today we're gonna to be talking about mitosis. So this is the normal cellular division that the majority of our cells undergo um, in life. And then next time we're gonna talk about meiosis, which is only happens um, during reproduction, okay? So today, just mitosis, and I know they sound very similar. So mitosis versus meiosis, we're gonna talk a lot about that and what the similarities and differences are. So today we're gonna start off talking about the genome. Uh, what is the genome? What are chromosomes? Uh, what is DNA, right? We've talked a little bit about what DNA is already and chromosomes, and we'll kind of put that all together today with the genome. And then we're gonna focus the majority of our time on the cell cycle. So that's really mitosis and um, what happens during cell division during the cell cycle. And then what can go wrong with the cell cycle, which is how we get cancer. So cancerous cells are not following the rules of the cell cycle and we'll see um, how that happens. And then, so the majority of the time, we're gonna be talking about eukaryotic cells and cell division, but prokaryotic cells also un undergo cell division, and it's quite simple in comparison to the eukaryotic cells. So we'll just finish up, uh, finish up today just talking about the prokaryotic cell division. So when we talk about the genome, we're talking about a cell's complete complement of DNA. So that's all of its DNA, and we just refer to it all together as the genome. So it's really the blueprints to um, whatever organism it is, and then the DNA and the genome is what maps out um, all the proteins and things in the body and all those um, processes that we've talked about a little bit before when we were talking about DNA. And we'll get into how DNA uh, is made into proteins, how we make proteins when we uh, get into um, that section during the class, okay? But where is the genome found, right? Where is our DNA found? We've talked about this a little bit, uh, prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic cells. A prokaryotic cell has a nucleoid, right? And it's just a single double-stranded loop of DNA, so very simple. It's just all kind of found in one area of the cell. It doesn't have a cell um, or it doesn't have a nuclear membrane like we see in the eukaryotic cells. We just call it a nucleoid, right? It's just packed DNA. And then in the eukaryotic cells, we do have a nucleus. And so we now have chromosomes in our eukaryotic cells because we have several double-stranded um, DNA molecules bound with protein altogether because there's so much DNA in a eukaryotic cell that we have to package it a certain way to be able to fit it inside that nucleus. Okay, so very specialized way of packaging our um, genome into the nucleus. So now let's talk a little bit about chromosomes. So we said that we have so much DNA um, in our genome that we have to pack all that DNA very specifically into chromosomes to fit into the nucleus. And every species has a specific number of chromosomes in their nuclei. And so as humans, we have 46 chromosomes. And when you talk about chromosomes, you're talking about um, paired chromosomes. So when we talk about a pair of chromosomes, we really only have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So overall, you get 46 individual chromosomes. So this is just kind of a look at um, our chromosomes. And so they're all paired and each pair kind of looks similar, same size, kind of similar shape. Um, and then we have our sex chromosomes as well. So that just depends um, on whether you're female or male, okay? And that's the only pair that's different, right? So when we talk about pairs of chromosomes, right, 
They're um, known in a configuration as diploid when they're paired up together and they're matching sets, right? We said they're similar shape and size. So when you pair them together, it's known as diploid. And we use the letter N to represent a single set of chromosomes. Therefore, a diploid organism is 2N. Okay, so if you look on the left on our picture, we just have one copy of each chromosome, so then it's haploid. And haploid really only happens during reproduction. Okay, so we'll talk a lot more about haploid uh, when we talk about meiosis. So when you pair them up, you have two copies of each chromosome, and therefore you have a diploid set. Okay, so that would be 2N, right? So that's how we refer to our chromosomes or um, a human cell or a, even just a eukaryotic cell as diploid. So then just to reiterate what haploid is, if you only contain one set of the 23 chromosomes, um, these guys are haploid or what we call as our gametes. So these are sex cells. So these are really only for reproduction. So gametes or haploid cells have to come together to create a diploid cell to create life, right? So um, females produce um, eggs as their gametes and males produce sperm as their gametes and they are both haploid cells and so they're designated as N and then they come together to create 2N or diploid and then the cells can start dividing um, and produce new life. Okay, and again, we're going to talk more about this um, and gametes and meiosis um, in the next lecture. But just to get an idea of what diploid and haploid means. So we said that in diploid, um, we have matched pairs of chromosomes, right? And these guys we can we refer to as homologous chromosomes. Homologous just means the same. So essentially, the two chromosomes that are paired together are the same length. And the biggest thing is that the genes are in the same location. And that location we refer to as a locus, okay? So not locusts like the insect, but locus meaning the location of the gene on the chromosome. And so if you notice in the picture, we've kind of highlighted some of those genes in different colors. And so the same color would be the same gene and they're lined up in the same position on those paired chromosomes, except obviously our uh, sex chromosomes, right, 23, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. So now let's talk a little bit more about those genes. So we said that genes are going to line up um, at the same site, at the same locus on a pair of homologous chromosomes. And what these genes are going to do is they're actually determining specific characteristics and traits um, in the organism or in the human, if we're talking about a human, such as these things can tell us um, our eye color or our hair color, right? And you're going to receive one gene or one copy from each parent. So that means that um, each copy may not be identical, right? So the genes, even though they're at the same position and they both tell you eye color or hair color, one may say blonde and one may say brown, right? If you're talking about hair color. So again, it may not be identical because you get one from each parent, but then we're going to talk about how they interact and then which one. So say you do have a blonde and a brown hair color. Well, does that mean are you blonde or are you brown haired, right? So that's where genetics comes into play and we'll talk about that in, a, in another lecture as well, okay? So again, we can have an example of blood type as well. And again, we're going to talk a lot more about this um, in our genetics lecture. Okay, but all of these genes are on the chromosomes and they line up right with their match paired chromosomes. So they're homologous chromosomes. So they may not be identical genes, but they are going to determine the same characteristic or trait. 
So now let's talk about those sex chromosomes because they are the exception to our homologous chromosome rule. And I said we'll talk about them in a minute. They're kind of the odd man out, right? So you only really need a small amount of homology, meaning um, matchness, to produce gametes. So they don't have to match perfectly. So the majority of genes are not the same between X and Y chromosomes. So when we're talking about this kind of special rule, we're really just talking about a male. So the male is the XY, and so they are two completely different chromosomes. And you may get a little homology or a little matching, but the majority of them are not the same. Whereas when you talk about a female, that's an XX, so you have two chromosomes that are completely homologous. But in the male, that Y chromosome is smaller and missing quite a bit of genetic information. So you could make all the jokes that you want about that, but it's different, right? So that is our exception to the rule of homology between chromosomes, and that is the XY um, chromosomes, okay? So now that we know a little bit more about chromosomes and the genome, let's talk about the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is really important for cells in our body that are undergoing growth, so cellular growth or cellular repair. So we have two stages of the cell cycle. Um, but essentially, one of the stages that we're going to talk about is mitosis, and that's the actual um, cellular division stage, but the other stage is just kind of the resting stage of the cycle. So most cells are going to be living in that resting stage, and then they will undergo mitosis if they need to, to divide. So one cell essentially replicates its own DNA, meaning it makes an exact copy of its genome, and then it divides that into two daughter cells. Okay, so then you have an exact replica of yourself, right? And that's what mitosis is. Okay, so the cell is going to divide, creating two exact copies of itself. Okay? So we said that the cell cycle has two major phases. And so the first and kind of the where most cells spend the majority of their life is in the interphase. And this is really the cell just growing, okay? So the cell is doing its normal um, processes, so it undergoes some cell growth, but this is also where DNA replication happens. So if we're gonna replicate our DNA, we're getting ready for division. And so that's our second phase, and that's the mitotic phase, or we're going to undergo cell division and mitosis, okay? So this is kind of a great picture of what is happening during a cell cycle. So if you look, we have interphase. We have a couple interphases, right? And that's the majority of this cell cycle. So it's taking up the majority of the pie, right? So usually a cell is going to be in interphase, right? And if you notice, there is DNA synthesis in here, right? So that's where we're gonna replicate that DNA, getting ready uh, for the mitotic phase. Okay, so the mitotic phase is very short, but it's very important because that is our cell division where we form two identical copies of ourselves. So let's talk a little bit more about interphase, right? So the cell spends the majority of its time in interphase. So this is where we get some cell growth and that DNA replication getting ready for mitosis. So what are the three stages of interphase? Well, we call it G1 or growth one phase. And this is going to be cell growth. So that's what's happening. It's undergoing normal metabolic functions, right? And then we have S phase. So this is the synthesis phase. This is where the DNA is going to replicate. So it's going to make a copy of that genome. 
and then it's going to go into the second growth phase or G2 phase. And again, there's going to be growth, but also preparation for mitosis. So it's going to make sure all of its ducts are in a row, say, hey, is this cell ready to divide? Okay, and if it is, then it'll go into the mitotic phase. So I've just written out for you guys what we just talked about on the last, last slide during uh, the stages of interphase. So G1 phase, the cells are metabolically active, right? So they're getting energy, they're getting the material ready for replication. So there, it's the first growth phase. And then what's actually happening during the synthesis phase or the S phase is that the DNA replication is essentially creating identical copies of each of those chromosomes. And we call those um, identical copies, the paired chromosomes, sister chromatids. And that'll make a little more sense um, when we talk more about um, mitosis and meiosis, okay? And then we also have these structures called centrosomes, and essentially they're gonna be important for our mitotic phase, okay, for the actual um, cell division. So we'll talk more about those in a minute as well. And then you have your last growth phase or second growth phase. And this is where you're gonna kind of make up some of that energy that you've used during replication. You're kind of getting everything ready for cell division and mitosis. So just to kind of clear up what DNA replication is and those homologous chromosomes versus sister chromatids and what the difference is, is this picture says it great, okay? So on the left, we have homologous chromosomes, right? So they're two chromosomes that have the same um, genes in the same location, they're the same length, they're homologous, right? So what happens is, is you copy an exact copy of each of those chromosomes. And that's where you get the sister chromatids, right? So the sister chromatids are the copies of the, of the chromosomes, okay? So if, when you refer to them together, they are still homologous chromosomes, even though now they have an exact replica attached to them. Okay, so they're still homologous chromosomes. They've just now got their sister chromatids uh, with them. Okay, and so that's what's happening during DNA replication. So now that we've gone through interphase, right? So we've, you know, grown, we've undergone DNA replication. So we've um, made an exact copy of our genome. We have our sister chromatids. We've made sure everything's in order. We've got enough energy. We've got our ducks in a row. Now we're ready to divide. And so now we're gonna go into the mitotic phase. And this is where the cell does actually divide into two identical cells, okay? So one cell becomes two cells. And there's two major divisions in mitosis. So a lot of us focus on the nuclear division, which essentially is dividing uh, that copied genome, right? So we've made an identical copy. Now we have to separate it into uh, two cells. But you're also dividing the entire cell itself. And that's the physical cell division, and that's called cytokinesis. So that's where you're actually going to split the cell in two. Then you're going to have two um, cell membranes, plasma membranes. You're going to have um, all the organelles in the cell as well. So that's the physical cell division. Okay. So now let's go through the phases of the nuclear division. Okay, so this is what people consider as uh, mitosis, right? So our first phase is prophase. So what's happening during prophase is that the nuclear envelope, right, starts to kind of disintegrate and disappear. So we have to, you know, get rid of that nuclear envelope to be able to separate those chromosomes. Okay, or those sister chromatids essentially, right? And so the other thing that happens during prophase, 
we said that these centrosomes are going to be developed uh, during the DNA synthesis phase and interphase. And I said, you know, this, these guys are going to be important during mitosis. Well, we have two centrosomes and essentially they're going to migrate to the polar opposite ends of the cell. And they're going to become important because they're going to create these spindle-like structures that are actually going to attach to the chromosomes. And that's what happens during prometaphase. So some people um, don't talk about prometaphase, so they just say prophase and then metaphase, but there is kind of a little step in between prophase and metaphase, so we call it prometaphase. Very original. So what happens is the chromosomes become a little more condensed, so they kind of group up together. And then those mitotic spindles that are coming down from those centrosomes are going to attach to the chromosomes. Okay, so I'll circle the centrosomes here. So there's a centrosome on either side. And then you can see the blue lines are those mitotic spindles that come down and attach to the little chromosomes. Okay. So now we actually have metaphase, and this is where the chromosomes actually line up, kind of single file line in the middle of the cell. And the sister chromatids are still attached, remember? So we have the sister chromatids that are actually going to be uh, what are lining up um, single file. Okay, so each chromosome has its sister chromatid still attached to it. Um, so it looks like a homologous chromosome in the middle, right? But it um, is the sister chromatid that lines up, okay? And then we have anaphase, where we actually pull those sister chromatids apart and they are getting pulled toward those centrosomes. So those mitotic spindles are gonna act like little pulley systems and just pull those sister chromatids apart. So now you have an exact copy on one side and the other sister chromatid on the other side, right? So you're splitting those sister chromatids apart and pulling them towards the other sides of the cell. And then during telophase is the final phase of our nuclear division, okay? So this is really now we have to recreate a nuclear envelope, right, around the chromosomes because we have to create a new nucleus, okay? So that's what's happening in telophase. So we've separated those sister chromatids. Now we have to put a nuclear envelope around them again. And then our final phase of the cell cycle is cytokinesis, right? So this is where we actually physically divide the cell itself to create two identical cells, okay? And so I have videos for you guys on Canvas and links on the PowerPoint as well to show you um, this one is for the real cells undergoing mitosis. So it's under a microscope and you can actually see the real live uh, chromosomes and what they're doing. So it's kind of cool. And then the other video, I have just like a cartoon video of what's happening uh, during mitosis in the cell cycle. Okay. So again, we're dividing that cytoplasm and the plasma membrane during cytokinesis. A lot of people forget this phase, um, but it's actually the second stage of the cell cycle, right? Or the um, mitotic phase, right? So we split the nucleus, then we split the cell. So here's just a cool table that lays out all the stages of mitosis and kind of talks about what's happening. There's pictures on the top as well as some real live images that they've um, put under phosphorescence. So it, um, it glows green, right? So it's kind of cool to see what's happening in the real cell down there. And then this one is actual uh, microscope images of what's happening in the cells. And hopefully, um, I know you guys aren't in lab, but in lab, you can see all of these different stages um, in the cell and see what's happening with those chromosomes. 
So you can see in the first one during interphase, you can't actually see the differentiated chromosomes. It's just kind of all bundled together um, in the nucleus, and this is called chromatin, right? And then the chromatin starts to condense into these chromosomes. So you can actually see the distinct different chromosomes, and then you can see them all line up right, during metaphase, and then anaphase, you can see them separate, and then telophase, they're creating a new nuclear envelope, and then they're completely dividing during cytokinesis. So kind of cool to see the actual cells undergoing this process. So when we talk about the cell cycle, we're not talking about all the cells in the body. So not all cells are going to actually actively undergo cellular division. So what happens is they actually go into what's called a G0 phase or an inactive stage. And so there are certain cells in our body that either, either temporarily or permanently go into this G0 phase. So some that go in there uh, permanently are heart muscle cells and nerve cells. So they are unable to divide. And so they are living permanently in this inactive stage, okay? So either they can kind of go in there temporarily or they're kind of permanently in there and then they never divide um, over their lifetime. Okay, so that's why, you know, if you think about the kind of some cells in your body or tissues in your body that are poor at healing or, you know, if you damage them, they don't come back. And so that is your heart muscle and your nerve cells. They just uh, can't come back from damage. So now let's talk a little bit about the control of the cell cycle. So what tells the cell to go into these different phases? Um, how long is the cell cycle? Those types of things. And what's, what is it under the control of? So the cell cycle itself, the whole length of it is variable. So that means in some cells it might be a few hours or in other cells it might be a lifetime. So that's different, as well as the different time in each phase. So how long do they spend in G1, um, S phase, G2, and the mitotic phase? So it just varies, okay? So it varies with each type of cell. So the whole timing of these events are controlled by both external um, mechanisms, meaning things that are outside the cell, or even internal mechanisms. So there are certain things within the cell itself that tells it, okay, now you're allowed to go into uh, G1 phase, or now you're able to go into the mitotic phase. So they are called um, checkpoints in the internal uh, mechanisms of the cell. So those external controls could be hormones. Right? So a hormone may come and tell us a tissue that, hey, these cells need to grow, like growth hormone, right? Growth hormone tells your cells to grow, right? Because that's during um, childhood when we're growing, right? So we need more cells to grow. And then those internal checkpoints I was talking about, those guys are inside the cell itself. And what they do are, uh, they're trying to prevent cells from dividing if the cell is compromised. So say a cell has been damaged somehow, right? It's going to keep it from dividing because it doesn't want a damaged cell to divide. So it's kind of like a checklist. Do we have X, Y, and Z? Do we have enough energy? Do we have the right amount of chromosomes, right? So it's gonna go through a checklist and make sure everything is in order before it can actually divide. So let's go through these internal checkpoints, okay? So during the G1 cycle, kind of at the end of G1, so that's during growth and they're metabolically active during that time, they're getting energy, they're readying for DNA replication. It looks like, does it say, okay, is the DNA damaged at all? 
How big is the cell? Cell size is a huge part of telling whether the cell is normal or not. So it checks cell size and it checks that it has the right growth factors, the right nutrients um, before it can go into DNA synthesis. Okay, so once it replicates during synthesis, then we have another checkpoint at the end of G2 or growth 2 phase, and it kind of checks for the same stuff, except now instead of DNA damage, did we replicate that DNA correctly? Are our sister chromatids out, are okay? Are they normal, right? And again, we check for cell size because that's a great um, telltale sign that something's wrong if the cell is not the correct size. And then we also have a checkpoint at the end of the mitotic phase. So essentially, it's kind of towards the middle, really, of the mitotic phase, not towards the end, like the two growth phases. But it's checking that the spindle is correctly attached to the chromosome itself. So are those little um, metodic spindles coming down from the centro centrosomes, are they um, attached to the chromosomes correctly? So that's kind of this spindle assembly checkpoint, okay, that's happening kind of in the middle um, of the mitotic phase. So if they don't attach correctly, they're not going to finish mitosis. Okay, so these guys are these checkpoints to make sure everything is going smoothly and correctly before we divide into uh, two cells. So let's go ahead and pause the video and you can answer these questions on your own. So what were the five phases of mitosis? And then what is cytokinesis? And the big thing too is why are those internal checkpoints important, right? So hopefully you guys were able to answer these questions on your own. So what are the five phases of mitosis? Well, we had prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, okay? And you can kind of come up with an anagram if that helps you for, you know, P, P, M, A, T. So you can make up a little saying to remember the um, order of those phases if that helps you. And then what is cytokinesis? So that is the actual physical cellular division of the plasma membrane and of the cytoplasm, okay? And then those internal checkpoints, why are they so important, okay? They're to keep compromised cells from dividing. Now think about that, and we'll talk about cancer, right? So speaking of cell division and cancer, right, what is the relationship? So cancer is uncontrolled cellular division. We just said the cell cycle has a bunch of control systems, either external or internal controls. So how does cancer happen? How do we let these cells divide uncontrolled? Well, what happens is you get a small percentage of replication errors, right? And they're considered mutations, right? Mutations are variations. They could lead to great things, right? They could lead to um, natural selection, right? And evolution, right? If it's a, if it's a, a positive adaptation, but Sometimes they're negative, right? And so these guys can pass on to those daughter cells, these um, mutations, but then they can accumulate. So if you get more and more mutations, then the cell is going to be more and more damaged if they're negative mutations. And then eventually what happens is they can bypass some of these control systems and the growth of these mutated cells will eventually outpace the growth of normal cells because they're uncontrolled. So they just keep dividing and dividing and dividing and you end up with a tumor, right? So 
in the picture here, you have your normal cell division. And what happens if you do get cell, some sort of uh, damage, right, then you are no longer going to divide that damaged cell. And so what happens is the cell usually undergoes apoptosis, which means it destroys itself, it kind of shrivels up and dies. And so then that cell doesn't divide anymore. But if you get, um, you know, a mutated cell that can bypass some of these control systems, then you're going to accumulate these mutations and they're going to continue to divide and divide and you get a tumor. Okay. So we've just been talking about eukaryotic cells up until now undergoing cell division. But prokaryotes, such as bacteria and unicellular organisms, uh, can undergo cell division as well. And so they undergo what's called binary fission to reproduce, okay? So the parent cell produces two identical daughter cells, and that's actually how they reproduce. And it's very easy and it's very fast, which is why uh, bacteria can replicate so quickly. Okay, and they grow and they grow very, very fast. So what is binary fission, right? So it's just the term that they give uh, for prokaryotic cell division. Now it's much less complicated and a lot quicker um, than the cell division in our multicellular eukaryotic uh, organisms, right? So why is it so much quicker and less complicated? Well, we don't have as much DNA. Right? So we just have that one loop of double-stranded DNA to replicate, so that'll go real quick. We have no nuclear envelope, right? So that's two phases right there in mitosis that we can cut out, right? Because we dedicate a whole phase essentially to dissolve the nuclear envelope and then another one to rebuild the nuclear envelope, right? So definitely a lot quicker. We just pretty much replicate that DNA and then the cell splits. Right, so very straightforward, very fast, and that's why we can get bacterial growth that's just very, very fast and can be quite scary um, if we don't get them under control, right? So this is the end of this lecture, and then we will cover meiosis, which can be a little more complicated, I think, than mitosis. So definitely get mitosis under your belt. Watch the videos uh, before getting into meiosis, and we'll cover that um, next lecture. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, contact me or come to office hours next week. All right, talk to you guys later.